Frank Sinatra Has a Cold by Gay Talese appears in the April 1966 Esquire. Considered by many to be the finest magazine article ever published, Talese's report turns Sinatra's lack of cooperation into a masterpiece. All the elements of a short story are present. Vivid scene setting, lots of dialogue, character description, and interior monologue. But I was unenthusiastic about it from the very beginning. I flew out to Los Angeles. I was put up in the Beverly Wilshire. I arrived on a Sunday and I finished reading all the clips I'd brought out with me. I ordered room service that night, a steak and a bottle of wine at Esquire's expense. And I thought, Monday, I'm going to get the press agent to pick me up and we're going to see Sinatra and get started and I'll get out of here. Well, the next morning I called the press agent, Mr. Mahoney's office, and he said, we have a problem. What's the problem, I asked. He said, well, we have, Frank has a cold. And also, and I said, well, how long? Well, he'll get better pretty soon. Well, then we have another problem, he went on. Mahoney went on, and he said, uh, you know, Walt Cronkite is doing this piece for CBS, some news program, in which it was, the rumor was that Cronkite and the staff of Cronkite at CBS were going into t Sinatra's alleged connections with mafia members. The lawyer for Sinatra would like to look at my piece. The first person who sees this is my editor, Harold Hayes. You talk to Hayes, you said, I was told it was all set up. I was told all I have to do is fly out here and you would arrange everything, Mr. Mahoney. That's what I was told. And I called Harold and I said, I can't, can't do this. And I said, well, we can do two things. I said, I can come back and the hell with it. Or I can stay out here and I can work around it. But I did say to Harold, this may take time. And I know that I'm in a first class hotel and I rented a car. I can move, I can see if I can get an apartment or, or a cheaper hotel. And he said, no, don't do it. That's stay where you are. It's just keep in touch. So he hung up for about two weeks. I was taking people to lunch and dinner on Harold Hayes' expense account. And I had these numbers and people, they were minor people, but they were major to me. And they had a time in their past when they worked with Sinatra or on the edge of Sinatra. And so I started seeing these people and getting information and putting it together in my head and then on paper and thinking what this said about the main character of Sinatra. The main break I got was that one night when I was with Jack Hansen and Sally Hansen, the owner of the discotheque called The Daisy, I saw Sinatra at the bar with two blondes. And I didn't go over and say, oh, Mr. Sinatra, I'd like to interview you now, or can we talk, or I didn't do anything. I just stayed back. Sinatra didn't seem to be paying attention to the music. He was drinking, smoking between these two blondes. After a while, he just left them and he followed and went into the pool room. And at one pool table, Sinatra saw someone, some guy, young guy shooting pool. Somebody nudges me and said, Mr. Sinatra's talking to you. I look over and I said, yeah. He said, are those Spanish boots? I said, no. And I go back to another shot. But about a minute and a half later, he says, are those Italian boots? Now I know he's fucking with me. And I say, no. And everybody in the room is silent because there is an ominousness when you, when you see something like this taking shape and they, nobody wanted to get in his way, nobody. Uh, are those English boots? <laughs> and they were. And I said, why are you talking to me? Do we know each other? And he says, I don't like the way you're dressed. I said, people in hell want ice water. It don't mean shit to me. <laughs> now, Everybody in the room is saying, Ellison is gonna die. And I got the name of the person who was having this confrontation with Sinatra. And he says, listen, I hear you had a little fight with uh, Frank Sinatra in here a week or so ago. I said, eh, it's no big deal, it's bullshit. He said, well, tell me about it. And I said, mm, he said, come on, come on, tell me. So I told, I told him what I've just told you, but in more detail, because it was Gate Talese. This is what I heard. I think Sinatra said this, he said, that's right. And I said, well, yeah, that's what happened. I said, but how do you know I'm telling you the truth? He says, because I was there. I says, what were you thinking? Were you worried, were you, did you think Sinatra would, would it hit you? You know, he has his reputation. I said, I've had calls all week from people telling me I'll never work in town again or that I'm about to get cement over shoes. You get an idea of what the person was thinking. And I always do that in my nonfiction. And Harold Hayes always liked that interior monologue or the fact of, inv not invading, but intruding upon the private thoughts of the person you're writing about.